Hi, I'm Tina Oldno, Curator of Modern Glass at the Corning Museum of Glass. On October 17, 2008, the museum presented its annual Raycal Commission. This was the sculpture North Sea Waves by Slovak artist Zora Palova. As part of the presentation, Zora gave a lecture about her work. We hope that you will enjoy the following videocast of that lecture. For a transcript or more details about the museum, please visit the museum's website at www.cmog.org. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the Reykjavik Commission artist for 2008, who is Zora Palova. Zora has traveled to be with us from Bratislava, Slovakia, with her husband, Stepan Pala, who is also a very well-known and accomplished glass sculptor. I hope you will not hesitate to meet them during the reception for the Reykjavik Commission, which takes place after this lecture in the Crossroads Gallery. And you'll be able to see uh, Zora's new sculpture in the Contemporary Glass Gallery. Zora's Reykjavik Commission is a monumental sculpture of cast deep gray glass titled North Waves. And we just put it in this morning. And I think all of you will enjoy looking for it. By the end of her lecture, you will certainly recognize her work. The idea of water and its expression in glass is attractive to many artists. However, Zora is not inspired, as are some artists, by calm pools, mists, or chunks of ice. What she embraces are the cold and unpredictable waters of the North Sea. Her interpretation of these waters is strong and gestural in her thick cast glass sculptures that combine heavy slabs with fragile undulating edges. Zora is an independent artist who lives and works in Bratislava. She studied painting and sculpture at the Academy of Fine Arts in Bratislava from 1969 to 1971. She then switched to glass and studied from 1971 to 1975 in the Department of Glass uh, in Architecture at the Academy with the well-known Czech glass sculptor Václav Siegler. After 20 years of working independently while she raised a family, she was appointed in 1996 as a research professor teaching glass sculpture at the University of Sunderland in England. In 2003, she became a visiting professor at Sunderland so that she could devote herself full time uh, to her sculptural work, which includes individual objects as well as installations and architectural commissions. Over the past five years, Zora's sculptures have developed in concept and scale, and her exhibitions and teaching have brought attention to artists working in glass in Slovakia, who are not as well known or not as numerous as artists in the Czech Republic. Zora's approach to cast glass sculpture is perhaps characteristic of her generation, which draws from and breaks with the ideas developed by the famous Czechoslovak artists of the post-war era, such as Stanislav Lubensky and Jaroslava Brichtova and Rene Robichev and Václav Siegler. Her understanding and use of glass is gestural, emotional, and grounded in the natural world rather than being philosophical or geometry-based. She prefers to work with light using rough textures and transparent color in glass rather than with its reflection of off the smooth surfaces of colorless optical glass. Yet the discipline of working with glass in conceptual and theoretical ways during her years of study with Professor Siegler has provided an important framework for her highly expressive sculpture, which is imbued with emotional depth and intellectual gravity. Zora will now tell us more about her life and life's work. Please welcome Zora Palova. Tina, thank you very much. Dear friends, um, first of all, I would like to introduce myself or my work, uh, then Stepan's work, who is my husband for 38 years. Uh, we are working and living together. Um, and then third, uh, we will see, uh, or you will see video about the process of uh, working on a Reykjavik Commission. Um, when I was thinking of uh, what I would speak about uh, um, in my lecture or <laughs> in my talk, I was sitting on our terrace outside and I have seen a beautiful sunset. And next day, again, 
but it's completely different. And then I came to the idea to speak about my private light inside glass, because when you see the light is uh, penetrating the clouds, and uh, when is the um, dark color and this light color penetrates through, then uh, um, it is very similar to what's happened in glass. This is the sample of how we can create light inside glass, because we are privileged as a glass artists create um, light inside the glass. If you know um, how to do it, if you are ex experienced enough, then you do it. Uh, here you can see the glass in a very uh, um, deep uh, parts is darker and very thin parts on the top it seems like clear glass, and still it is the same glass, just is cast in different way, and uh, you can see different color. It makes light. It is why light need, a glass needs light. Um, I have been inspired for uh, many years with the water and with the sea, because in uh, Czechoslovakia or Slovakia we didn't have uh, any sea. We have good water, a lot of water, but not the sea. And uh, when I have been in Sunderland and I have seen um, such a beautiful sea which uh, changes every day and gives you picture, um, different picture every day, dependent to the light, to the sky, to sunshine, to sunset, to sunrise, then uh, um, I just try to express it in my way. Here you can see what's happened when uh, uh, there are two pictures, when light comes front of the picture and when light comes through uh, from behind. It, it was the same and here is um, taken photographs from the polished side. Then it's completely glass, <laughs> it's glass and the first one it could be, uh, the first picture could be something different as well. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, here I, I would like to show you two pictures. Um, because, as I told you, I try to express the sea or feeling of the sea. This sensitivity of light. And that piece is from 1998. Um, from the series of uh, the wings or the or uh, wings, because I usually work um, in series like wings, bridges, uh, water, sea, and this picture uh, is from 2004, because uh, it it was my intention to express the sea and. Uh, I came to the first piece because I think it's very important to artists to have like a mainstream of creation. Then you can go that way, that way, that way. And obviously you can come uh, back and to think what to do more with the piece. And here I made uh, the, uh, the pieces in clay and I thought, wow. I can stand it up and make a triangle shape and I will get the piece like this. The shape of the, uh, the form is still wing, but I start here with this like a lace, look like lace uh, work. This is again this attempt uh, to express like sunset uh, on the sea. This piece um, is two meters tall and uh, is gray-green color. Um, and again, it's uh, with the waves, uh, because I, what I like is a, a geometrical shape, really straight, and with some details inside, what makes more a human piece in my mind. <laughs> um, this is about light again. 
I captured the light um, in a triangle because of the thickness and uh, thin parts in triangle, in the point of triangle. And again, the light which um, comes from the side um, makes the color on the other side purple. <laughs> it's uh, purple, green, uh, blue. Is just a work with light. And if uh, I knew that uh, it could happen on the point, but uh, this purple color, I didn't accept it at that time. This piece is um, from a series of bridges. Uh, it's from 1996, uh, 1997. Um, I made uh, many um, bridges because bridge is not just about connection um, to um, parts of uh, cities, but it's philosophical um, connection between people, uh, doing relationship between people. And I, I try to express sometimes it's very in very industrial uh, shape and sometimes in, in a um, more soft, maybe I have got one picture, right? Um, you can see some, uh, some sample of my drawings where I, um, first of all, I draw my pieces because I would like have, uh, they would, uh, they would become at the end in a shape. Obviously, um, by creation, uh, I immediately think about uh, the light which uh, through openings come out, come out, comes out. Uh, here is uh, um, again a sample of uh, my wings. Um, I try to make it in a, in a clear glass because um, the clear glass is not made from optical glass, which is completely clear, but is made from crystal. And uh, you can see inside uh, some waves and bubbles, and it is like the third the, or fourth dimension, like new world inside the glass. And uh, from the other angle, uh, the one side is made by in clay by my finger, and the fingerprints stays. And uh, this uh, uh, prism effect, you can see the, these fingerprints everywhere. But obviously, it is very difficult to take a photo of it. This is again from the series of uh, bridges, um, where um, it was next, <laughs> next I was thinking of um, to uh, make like a big project. Project, Can you imagine this piece, three meters tall, and people could walk through. It was my idea afterwards. It seems to me like a model market for the huge project. This is from series of the birds. Uh, uh, I try again, very simple shape, but uh, very rough and uh, um, very dynamic. And um, using openings um, in, uh, uh, because, <laughs> because uh, I would like to dematerialize glass. Glass is very heavy. And I try to make bigger and bigger scale uh, uh, glass sculptures, but how to do it? Only when uh, I will use as less glass as is possible. Then uh, I came to the idea to make like drawings in this glass. It means um, uh, it is like real drawing, but in material. This is my very old piece from 1992, um, when uh, you see uh, that I was working with the light inside glass. I tried to make openings through the uh, sculpture to get differences and to get space and light to uh, into the uh, sculpture. This is from my series of uh, pictures um, in glass, it is like daybreak. And uh, um, 
I try to express when um, you start your new day, then you are very strong, you feel very strong, but uh, obviously you, ha you are still in bed, lying in bed, but you want to wake up and <laughs> this triangle present um, uh, like a man, oh, sorry, again. <laughs> I must be still. <laughs> This is again from the series of these drawings. It's quite old piece and from the series of bridges. Uh, it calls Bridge Harp from 1994. It's a ruby glass and uh, again, the materialization of glass. Um, this was, I think, the first of this series of uh, drawing in glass uh, from 1993 and uh, it is very interesting in technique, but I wouldn't like to uh, speak about techniques, but uh, um, it's a uh, fissure, so called, and uh, um, I try again to make, uh, to make this less glass as is possible. Uh, this is the piece which uh, have been to Coburg, and I won the prize there, and it's about this drawing, and uh, it seems very soft, um, uh, frame and inside is like a new um, something new uh, and something very soft again like like um, ice <laughs> and this is from this series as well it's green glass and it works again with light and you can see shades shadows and um, because of these openings and uh, um, the light is uh, the light is coming through and makes complete glass completely different this is from series of uh, uh, the bridges as well is a uh, lean bridge and uh, i was surprised when we took the photographs what what shadows make, <laughs> how it helps to in this sh uh, sculpture. Um, this is an interesting piece of mine. Um, it was commissioned um, for association of Dutch insurers uh, in uh, Holland, and uh, it is eight meters tall sculpture. Two and a half is uh, made in granite, and uh, five and a half in eleven. Uh, parts, segments, and it is interesting because there is n any uh, metal support. It's an eight meter standing in a stair uh, stairwell, and you can go around, and you can see from all sides up to the top. And it is still there, and <laughs> everybody likes it. <laughs> this is one of my new series. I call it sitting, and uh, you can see drawing, and uh, it's a quite small piece for me. <laughs> it's about uh, 80, 90 centimeters, but uh, now uh, for uh, uh, Chicago, so far Chicago, I prepared um, like one meter, my, uh, one meter 70, one meter 75 in green color. Um, this piece, it, um, it's um, a leaf. Uh, I made it from the series leaves, <laughs> and uh, I made it in 2000. It's two meters tall, and my idea was to make uh, four seasons. Uh, spring would be green, uh, then uh, um, um, summer uh, yellow, and then uh, um, autumn, uh, autumn uh, red, and then um, winter uh, crystal. But uh, when I made one, I saw it immediately. I made second one, <laughs> red one, saw it immediately, and <laughs> yellow one. Then I don't have all photo of all of them. <laughs> then I think I need to repeat <laughs> what I hate. Um, this is an installation. It's crushed glass, just lie on the on, on the grass, for one uh, exhibition in Spa, Pieszczyny, Slovakia, and uh, uh, I call it upside down because I made 
something like clouds lying on, on the grass on the floor. Uh, this is a piece which we, we made together with my husband Stepan for uh, National Glass Center in uh, Sunderland, outdoor uh, sculpture. And uh, is it um, made in three sections and it has five meters and uh, two meters uh, ten uh, wide and um, it is about one ton of glass. <laughs> Um, it calls trans light transformer because of the light which comes through and uh, is dependent to the sunshine. When sunshine comes through, uh, the piece is completely white and uh, if it's gray uh, sky, then uh, light transformer is completely gray. Now. I would like to show you Stepan's work. Uh, Stepan um, is, comp uh, is different and he has different attitude to glass as I have. Uh, he is more involved in uh, geometry and uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in geometry uh, and math. Um, here you can see the piece which uh, uh, he made in four segments and 96 uh, pieces, four sides, uh, um, segment of four sides parts uh, glued together. It is work of one year of him and uh, it's two meters diameter. Now it is uh, in association of Dutch insurance in the same building where is my tall piece and it is in entrance hall. It's beautiful because it's again dependent to the light. Um, because of prismatic, uh, uh, pr prismatic effect, uh, then you can uh, get color inside. It is not uh, just clear. It's made from optical glass, which is very clear, very pure, highly polished. Then uh, um, it captured the glass. And what is fantastic on glass, I didn't tell you, that uh, the light goes through. It didn't stop on the top and reflect away, but it goes through and makes um, the glass um, clear or, or uh, without, um, make the glass, and in this case, optical glass, and brings the color inside. Um, because Stepan is uh, interested in growth, he's doing um, four sides elements and glue them in different way. Um, you have seen the ring was the first from the same, not the same one, because here he has one side curved, but uh, very similar four side elements. And he, uh, it, they can grow, is dependent how you glue it. They can grow to a spiral, to double spiral, or to uh, the ring, to different shape, shapes. Uh, I like this piece because it's very, very simple. Two cubes of made in optical glass. It seems uh, they are very calm, um, um, but uh, they are uh, very strong uh, by light. And um, when Stepan was at school, he made smaller pieces, these two, two cubes in 19... 74, and then he had the opportunity to make them bigger. It's 30 by 30 by 30, each cube. Again, different, um, different. It, it, it's like a picture <laughs> for me, <laughs> a very abstract picture, and it's just about light. Um, here he tries to make uh, this uh, curve to some sides of this force part, four sides uh, element, uh, like um, some are curved and some are straight. Uh, he tries uh, to make th these bubbles with uh, something what is completely different to, to his previous uh, work. Um, now, um, it is one of his um, maybe last year projects. Uh, he uh, is doing um, 
like waves um, and uh, um, very geometrical and to use different uh, system or uh, rhythm in the middle parts. Here is in blue, here is in uh, yellow, it's again different rhythm. Um, this is very uh, typical work of uh, Stepan's last period, or maybe between um, 1990 to 2005. Um, he uses lens uh, or two lenses and uh, uh, glue them with uh, some color. He added color to lens uh, to make new word inside through the lens. Here are t one lens is uh, built up together with three columns and uh, in modeli modelate and then one um, lens in the uh, optical glass. Here is different. Here he uses two lenses and he put inside, you will see, maybe here is better, he put inside a very geometrical shape. But that one piece, it looks like picture and is the same like that one. Um, it's again, it seems uh, when he uses two lenses and he puts something in between, it looks like it flies. <laughs> it uh, looks like it flies. Uh, you, uh, sometimes you don't see the lenses and just the piece which is uh, in the air. Um, here is uh, one uh, uh, sample of his drawings, but it is not ba made uh, by computer because he hates computer. <laughs> but it is made by hand. <laughs> He's a very patient person. <laughs> this is of his last work, uh, last projects. Um, it is like space um, is turning all around and uh, it's like space in space. Um, you can't see pro probably properly, but um, it's like never-ending uh, turning one um, like nobly. <laughs> and this is the last uh, pro uh, <laughs> picture so what I would like to show you because um, Stepan made, uh, he, it was commission um, like propeller and uh, uh, it's, um, it, may, uh, it has been made from steel and uh, optical glass. He uses here these optical principles uh, by um, a prism. But what is fantastic that um, if you uh, look from, because of the light which comes through, then you have got feeling that it, it's bent. It's not here. I think he needs to make a video of it. Then you will see it because it's, uh, it, is, um, um, it turns or uh, rotate um, on angle, then it rotates like that. And uh, you, uh, you have got feeling that um, it's um, something would uh, like bend the glass. But maybe next time <laughs> I will bring. <laughs> okay. Uh, and now um, it is the picture from Sandra and where I used to be, uh, I used to live, and uh, the sea was really dependent to uh, the sky and to the light. And you can see it was completely gray. And uh, it was my inspiration for, for Rachel Commission, which we will see now. Uh, on the video.
top i can see better if uh, is everything because uh, we will see it, uh, from the uh, is the mixture of uh, sand uh, plaster and uh, recycled mold crushed old molds like a queen. <laughs> middle process uh, hasn't been done because it's uh, very bored. <laughs> I uh, must take a clay out from the board and it takes ages. And here is um, filled, uh, the kiln is already loaded. And uh, after firing, after uh, five weeks, uh, we are allowed to open. And obviously there is not only this piece, we have to load the kiln full. <laughs> it is the blue piece what you have seen, but it, um, the last one uh, is the piece for here. And now start grinding. Uh, obviously, in the meantime, we took it to Shorasni Broad for uh, sandblasting and acid polishing. This is the different piece. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this video cast by the Corning Museum of Glass in Corning, New York, the world's largest museum devoted to the art, history, and science of glass making. This lecture was part of the museum's ongoing Meet the Artist lecture series, which is free and open to the public. The next Meet the Artist lecture will be by Therese LaHaye on November 6, 2008.